This is the Aral Sea. Once the fourth largest lake in the world with an area of 68,000 square kilometers. But in the last 25 years, it literally vanished from the maps. And this is Lake Tuz of Turkey. Its fate is no different. It also almost disappeared with likely most of its living communities. Climate change is a severe problem. We have to act against it immediately. However, there are also some other issues that are generally overlooked. One of which is excessive land and water use, in turn, causing salinization. Salinization can simply be defined as an increase in the amounts of dissolved minerals in water. It generally refers to concentrations of sodium and chlorine, but may also be the combination of different ions of potassium, carbon dioxide, sulfates, and even the mobilization of other heavier elements like copper, manganese, zinc, or strontium. All those minerals cause huge osmotic stress in freshwater organisms and lead to loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services. This means less drinkable water for us or for irrigation, less carbon burial for mitigating climate change, biodiversity loss, and an overall critical decline in the socioeconomic services of aquatic ecosystems. This is quite serious. Water extraction, urbanization, and road de-icing actions seem to be the major stressors leading to salinization, and all their effects are amplified by climate change. In most cases, we humans are the main cause, making it one of the grand, challenging problems of the freshwater ecosystems. However, despite the urgency of the problem, very little has been done, and we are still far from fully understanding the ecological and evolutionary consequences of freshwater salinization. To overcome this ambiguity, a group of scientists in an EU-funded project called Aquacosm Plus, including Metu Aquatic Ecologist Mariam Beklolu and Eric Yepesen, have conceptualized a research agenda with the aim of filling the knowledge gaps that would contribute to significantly advancing and concomitantly developing better management strategies, as well as to raising the general awareness. Their manuscript, published in the highly acclaimed Trends in Ecology and Evolution, addresses the uncharted territories in freshwater salinization in several scales, such as molecular, organism, regional, or global. And also, it establishes key priorities in each scale to follow for future research. As a key point, the article brings attention to the disproportionate geographical dispersion of previous works. When studies between 2017 and 2021 are put on a map, it's possible to see that almost all research had been based on either North America or Europe. Considering that salinization is a much greater problem in semi-arid regions of Asia, Africa, and South America, the agenda steers new approaches towards collecting data from these less studied regions. Similarly, the team also identifies a narrow focus on the representation of certain taxonomic groups. Most of the previous works seem to be concentrating on either invertebrates or zooplanktons, whereas lower and higher trophic levels, such as microorganisms or fish and birds, are largely ignored. In a nutshell, Yepesen and Bekliolu, with a large team now, aim to guide critical research in freshwater salinization in Turkey collecting data from saline lakes of large geographic regions and running mesocosms experiments to understand the causality of all those aquatic changes. Such studies, no doubt, would establish Middle East Technical University as one of the world's main hubs for freshwater salinization research.